Um, I want to welcome Maria Gibbs. We're delighted to have Maria join us today. Maria is a, a numeracy tutor in Parnell Adult Learning Centre in Dublin. And just to say hello, Maria, we're delighted to have you. Hi, everybody. And, and um, just to let you know, I was saying there, you're, all the people who are here today um, are muted. So we can't hear you or any background noises or anything. Um, but there's two ways you can ask a question. And I just, one of those is that where the orange um, arrow is on the right hand side of your, of your screen there, below that, there's a symbol that's like a hand like this. And if you click on that, um, I have a list of attendees and I can see that you'd like to ask a question and I can unmute your button then and you can ask the question yourself there. Um, the second way of taking part is you can type a question and that you get to that by see the orange button again. If you click on that, a number of options open up to you, including questions. And on the right hand side of the questions um, where it says questions, there's a box with an, a kind of a diagonal arrow going through it. And if you click on the box, uh, it opens up uh, and you'll be able to type a question there. So that's the two ways you can take part. And I was checking with Maria there um, before we started and she's happy, very happy to take questions during the presentation. So if you're wondering about something, you know, please do ask a question. Um, and remember, there's no silly question, like often something you're wondering about, somebody else might be wondering about as well. A very nice teacher in, in my secondary school said that to me, and it's kind of stuck with me all through my life, that actually, you know, about questions, seriously, I've, I've, a lot of the time, other people are wondering the same thing. So do feel free to ask a question if, you, if you'd like to. Um, and the other thing is, if you want to make a comment or, you know, say something that, that happened to you that you want to share that you think is, is might be of interest to others, please do that if you'd like. So um, without further ado, <laughs> I'll pass on to Maria. And as I said, thanks again, Maria, for joining us today. All right. OK, thank you. Uh, as Margaret said, my name is Maria Gibbs and I work in Parnell Adult Learning Centre. I had fully intended on having Abba's money, money, money playing in the background, but technology let me down, okay? First of all, uh, on the presentation, see this little button up here? That shows you all the interactive places on the slides. So you, can, you will know where to press to get extra information. So here, I'm gonna press here on my piggy bank. So we are going to share tips on shopping smart to save money and avoid waste, okay? Secondly, we're also going to use our phone's calculator to shop smart and work out percentages. I share my screen and, and put up a typical mobile phone calculator later on in the presentation, okay? And I can show you how to use it properly to find out, to work out percentages, okay? Now, First things first, things to think about when shopping. Some of them are questions you might want to ask yourself, okay? So firstly, buying in bulk. Is it worth it? Will I end up throwing it out? Will it go out of date? Can I split the cost with a friend or family member? This in particular is a good way of uh, getting good deals because a lot of times shops will uh, have cheaper items in bulk, okay? But you might use them. So if you have somebody close you can split the cost with, both of you will save. Versus that is buying individual portions. Yay, I won't have any waste and I can treat myself because I can buy a little small portion, okay, of something really good. But then you have to ask yourself, will I run out and have to buy it all over again and so cost myself more money? Should I have bought a bigger size? OK. Moving on then, we have two verses, quality versus quantity. OK, I would advise always go for the best quality that your budget allows. OK, and that's important. Know how much you can spend. 
Other than that, everybody should treat themselves every now and again. And I'm a firm believer in that, okay? On the other hand, I don't know whether you've seen my family at the start. I have three boys, are there men now, and a, do and a daughter. And really, to be honest, in my house, my family eats so fast, eats so fast, I should say, they don't even taste it, so why bother? And that was my thing. I bought for quantity because I couldn't afford the quality when they were all at home and teenagers. And they are things you have to weigh up yourself. Now, uh, there's only two of us in the household. So fresh is great, always the most healthy option. But I find now I'm throwing out a lot because it goes out of date. So you have to be really careful when you're buying fresh, okay? The other option to buy in fresh is to buy frozen. The pluses to this are frozen vegetables are the next best thing to fresh. And you only use what you need because you can put the rest into the freezer. Don't forget to make use of your freezer. Tip, cook double the amount needed for dinners and freeze half. It saves time and money, okay? Now, just moving on. Shopping around for deals. These are the two, I suppose, most used deals today in the shops, okay? So a lot of us would be familiar with three for two offers. Thing to note here is that usually the cheapest item is free. So to get the best value, make sure all the items are the same price. So if you're buying one item for 10 euro, one item for seven euro, and one item for five euro, you will only get the item for five euro free. So on the other hand, if you buy three, three items for 10 euro, you will get one of them free, so you'll get 10 euro off. This one is why 10 euro uh, voucher every time you spend 50 euro. It's a great idea, okay? But a lot of us don't be tempted to spend more money to get the 10 euro voucher, unless it's for something you need and won't go out of date because uh, otherwise it's a waste of that extra spending. My tips are, I would always pick up uh, cleaning supplies, uh, washing powder, um, domestos, that kind of thing, or canned and frozen food. You will always have them. They won't go out of, out of, of date and be wasted. Now, very popular now, you can use the internet to get the best deals, but remember only use trusted sites. See the lock, the closed lock here? That means the site is safe. Now you can use the internet for shopping, but also for comparing prices. Again, you see my little buzzer here. Almost anything can be purchased online. Nearly all shops now have a website. There are also lots of websites designed for buying and selling, such as Dundeal, eBay, and Amazon. Comparing prices. The internet is particularly good for seeking out the best price of almost anything. And there are many comparison websites, such as bonkers.ie. This is one that I have personally used over the years. I swap my, or change my electricity and gas maybe every year, okay? And this site makes it painless. Okay, I'm just gonna go on here. This is a, is a link to the uh, Bonkers website. I just click on it and show it to you briefly. Okay, this is where you can compare your electricity. It has a form you fill in, it tells you what details you need, and it takes care of everything for you, okay? I'm not going to, it takes up time to go through a website, so you can go through it at your leisure at home, okay? I'm going to move on now. The next site I'm going to show you is actually a government site. It's the Competition Consumer Protection Commission. Again, I'll show you briefly. This is a government site, so 
it, it's not going to make money out of you, so it's going to give you good advice. Okay, again, on all of these sites, you'll see this lock up here, which means it's safe. Okay, I'm going to scroll down here. So this is all the types of things that this site will help you with. It shows you how to complain. It talks about shopping. Uh, I'll just click in here for you. Okay, so it gives you all your consumer rights, buying goods, all about gift vouchers, and so on. Again, go through this site at your leisure. Okay, I'm going to go back onto the another useful site. Uh, I'm sure you're aware of it, is Citizens Information, and that gives you details again about all your rights. You can actually talk. It gives you details about what might be your own situation. Again, if I look, I'm going to just click in briefly. So there, you can click onto one of these. You can find a local center nearby you. Again, the site, uh, go to it when you've plenty of time and just click through and it, it, it'll give you lots of information. You won't break it, don't be afraid, okay? Again, I'm going to go back to the presentation again. Okay, now I'm going to skip on here. We're looking here at what would be a normal calculator on your phone. You're out and about. Typically, you're going to be problem solving, okay, and using ordinary, your own language, English language, and it needs to be translated into maths. So, this is over here on this side, you can see I have language used to help solve everyday maths problems. So underneath this sign here, you'll be familiar, it's the addition sign. We know it as plus, but it also helps you to find the sum of numbers. Add one and two together, find the total. All together is another term that would means we're going to be adding. If you want to add something more onto another figure, you're going to use this sign. Increase something, use this sign. I'm going to come on here. This is our takeaway sign, but it's also known as subtract minus. If you want to find the difference between two numbers, how much less one thing is than another, you're going to subtract. If you're decreasing an amount by another amount, you're going to use this. If you're looking for money off, you're going to be subtracting. This sign here is our multiply, okay? We all remember our times table. If you have groups of the same number, so say you're adding two plus two plus two, that's three groups of two, three times two is six. This word of is very important for us today because if we want to use our calculator to find a percentage, so we want to find, I'm just going to put it up here, it's important to know that the word of means multiply, especially when asked to find 25% of 200 on your calculator. You key in the following, you literally key in two, five, your percentage sign, multiply and your 200 and press equals and your answer will be 50, okay? That is 25% of 200. Going on here, this is our division. If I'm talking too fast, please interrupt me and tell me to slow down. Uh, here we have our divide sign. So if you want to share money, so for instance, you've won the lotto and you want to share it between your family and there's four people in your family, you're going to divide by four. If you want to know how much you would get each, you're going to divide. Again here, I'm sure you've seen the sign in the shops. It's here on your calculator. This is our percentage sign. Anytime you want to use any of these signs in a, to solve a problem, you press equals and it's going to give you your answer. Okay, I'm going to move on now. These are a few tips, okay? 
the importance of the decimal point when using a calculator. It divides euros from cents. So here we have one euro, we have the decimal point and 99 cents. It is important to not confuse it with a comma. I've had occasions where students see this number, which is 1,999, and they go to enter it into their calculator and they end up putting in a decimal point. And as you'll see further on, it makes it one euro and 99 cents. OK, so a common mistake when using a calculator is to use the decimal point in place of a comma. And this is what happens. So instead of having a thousand euro in your calculator, it ends up as one euro. Huge difference in value. OK. Another mistake is to leave out the decimal point. If you leave it out on your calculator, as you can see, 199 becomes 199. OK. Now. I just give this a chance to load up. On this uh, screen here, I have uploaded onto YouTube a few tutorials, a few little tips on how to work out both 1% and 10% without using a calculator by just moving your decimal point. I'm going to click on this. This is like a, an introduction of how important a decimal point is. Here. We've got 5.00 or 5 euro. If I move the 5 over one more place into the tens column by adding a zero, my decimal point, and two more zeros, you can see I've made the 5 more valuable. It becomes 5 tens or 50 euro. Here again, if I move it over one more place and make it 500, again, I have made the five more valuable. Simply by adding two zeros, keeping the decimal point and two more zeros. OK, I'm going to move on to the next one, and this video will sh show you how to find 1% of any amount. I'm just giving a few examples, okay? Now we're going to use the decimal point to help us find 1% of, let's just say, 500 euro, okay? To do this, we're going to play a little game of leapfrog with the decimal point. So if I rewrite the 500, and that's where the decimal point is, OK? You check up here, you have 500 zero, zero decimal point. So this time, in order to find 1%, I need to move that decimal point two places. Remember that, two places. So I'm just going to jump up one place, two places. So if I rewrite that down, I'm left with five, a decimal point, and two zeros. So 1% of 500 euro is actually five euro. When we're using our calculator on our phones, we're going to actually prove that this is correct. OK, I'm just going to show you. I have my mobile phone set up here. Hopefully everybody can see it. OK, this is a gen any smartphone will have a, a calculator on it, something very similar to this. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to, like I did mention before, using a calculator, I change. If I'm looking for 1% of 500 euro, I'm going to change that of to a multiplied sign. I'm literally going to put in Sorry, one should be up on your screen. I'm going to then yeah. press my, you, you see, the, see the percentage yeah. line light up. OK, you'll notice, you see, it has moved a decimal point two places. OK, don't worry about that. I'm going to now 
press my multiplied sign, you can see it light up, I'm going to put in my 500. I don't have to put in the decimal point, okay, because I've nothing in my cents column. And then I'm going to press equal, and you can see it gives me the answer of 5 euro. So you can do that without your calculator. Okay, I'm going to switch back now onto the YouTube and we'll show you a few more examples of... We've already seen how we can find 1% of 500 euro. Let's choose another number. So this time I'm going to have 250 euro. Again, when we want to find 1%, we move the decimal point to places. Okay, can everybody see that? So in order to find 1%, move the decimal point two places. So we're going to choose 250 euro. I'm going to write the 250. There's where the decimal point is. We're going to jump it, our leapfrog at one place two places. Now we rewrite it as euro. We've got the two, the decimal point, and five euro. So 1% of 250 is two euro and 50 cents. Let's try one more. We've got 199 euro. We've got the decimal point and two zeros for no cents. We've got 199 decimal point and now we're going to leapfrog it once twice so that's 1.99 euro and 99 cents okay how do you us know what one percent is well if you want to find out what two percent is you just multiply 250 by two so we'll give you five euro okay and the same here for a euro 99 you multiply it by two tricky one so let's say, call it two euro two times two is four and then we take away one cents for the 99 the first 99 and another one cents for the second 99 so it's going to be three euro and 98 cents And now we're moving on to the 10 cents. Yeah, we're going to find out a quick way of finding 10% of an amount. So let's say we're going to find 10% of 500. You'll notice I've rewritten the, rewritten the 500 with the decimal point. This time we only need to use it one place. Okay? So we're left with 50. Okay, we've moved the decimal point from here to here. So we've got five, zero, then the decimal point. And you'll notice that I've put two zeros after the decimal point because we're talking about money. We always have two places after the decimal point. Okay, let's find, choose another number such as our 250 euro. Again, this time we only move the decimal point one place. So I've got my 250 decimal point, move it over one place, and I'm left with 2500. Zero, zero. Again, I've added that extra zero because we're talking about money. So 10% of 250 is 25 euro. Again, if I move on with our 199 euro. Okay, what I'm looking at, I've got my 199 decimal point. 10% only move at one place. 
So I rewrite it now. I've got my one nine. My new place for the decimal point is here. And I've got nine. I add that zero because I'm talking about it. Okay, I'm going to show you just doing that, sorry, 10% 10, 10 on my calculator, okay, sorry. Okay, I'm going to clear my calculator here now. Okay, so I'm back, see that, this sign here? Okay, this time I'm going to, let's say I'm going to find my 10%. there hit hold down my 10 percent button oh sorry my 10 percent notice it's leapfrogged again and i've got 0 0.1 on my screen i'm going to hit my multiplied sign and I, this time i'm going to put in my 199 okay i don't need to put in the decimal point because i have no sense okay Press equal. Now you'll see on my screen there that my answer is 19.9 because the calculator doesn't recognize whether this is money or not. But because we're talking about euro, I have to add an extra zero. So it should be 19.90 or 1990. Okay. If you have any questions or this is not clear, don't hesitate to ask me, okay? I'm going to go back now here. Okay. And we'll just recap all of that, okay? Being able to find 10% of any amount is very important because from 10%, if we double it, we get 20%. So we know that 50% is 10% of 500. If we want to find 20%, we simply double the 50, which will be 100 euros. So 20% of 500 is 100 euro. Also from 10%, we can find out what 5% is because five is half of 10, therefore if we know what 10% is, in this case it's 50 euro. If we pass it, we know that 5% of 500 euro is 25 euro. I know it's a lot to take in, but you can always go over these videos or this webinar at your own pace. I hope all of this has been of use. Okay, we're nearly at the end, guys. Just one more slide. So, finally, always remember to make a shopping list before you head for the shops. Start by making meal plans, breakfasts, lunches, dinners. Remember to include snacks as well, so fruit, yogurts, healthy treats, such as nuts and maybe an odd unhealthy one as well. Don't forget to keep note of the basics such as cleaning items, tea, coffee, bread. As they run low, add them to your list. If obviously you check your presence, but what I tend to do, and I have the tip down here, if I notice that something is running out, I have notes on my phone and I tend to just write it in there because then I, I'm adding to it all the time and it doesn't matter. Or if I have a pen and paper down, if I have a notice board in my kitchen, I will write it on that as well. But it's just to keep it, check of things. So not to be building up loads of stuff that haven't rolled out, only build up on the stuff that are running out. Okay, I hope guys that that was of use to you. Thank you very much, Maria. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go back here. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm back. Great, Maria. Thank you very much. That was, okay. that was great. I think, I think that's very clear about the percentages in particular. 
which okay. I think um, Nala knows that a lot of people do struggle with figuring out percentages. Um, we did a, a, we asked students that were receiving the fund, about 1,500 students took part in the, the feedback session where we asked them a few questions. Um, or the local centre, you know, went through it with the students that were taking part in an event. So we do know that a lot of people do struggle with percentages. And I think that video, what you went through, will be very helpful for, for people. So thanks for that. Um, I'll just open up the floor again. If anybody would like to ask a question, um, please feel free to do that. Um, and as I said, I can unmute you then if you'd, if you'd like to ask anything. The tips also, Maria, were very helpful. You know, the, the tips for shopping. Mm -hmm. um, my, I, I remember my mother said to me one time, she, she said, God, Margaret, could, and I, I had a child at this stage, you know, and she was saying, God, Margaret, could come to, to 12 o'clock in the day and you mightn't be sure what you're cooking that evening. And I, I was thinking to myself, God, it could come to six o'clock that day and I wouldn't know what I was cooking. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I think I think our parents, um, but actually, funny enough, um, we we have begun to prepare our meals like you did say there, um, you know, with a weekly shopping list, I'd say for the last few years. And it it is kind of if people don't do that, it, it can be very reassuring to know you have the food in and, you know, kind of you do know what you're doing that day then in terms because you're busy out doing things during the day. So it is it is nice and you have the money spent too as well so you're less inclined to pick up stuff that you or to spend money on stuff you you know you've kind of you know you've got stuff at home so i think it's good for money as well for saving money not not so that that's a very useful tip the I think, other thing uh, you, having a family myself i think the less you go to the shops the less you spend so hmm. if you have everything you need to ha have din breakfast, lunch and dinner in. It means you can stay away from the shop. So you're not picking up that extra bit. You'll go in for a litre of milk and bread and you come out with a whole load of stuff. Yeah. But if you know you have everything there, you don't need to go to the shops. And the less you go, mm -hmm. the more you save. It's my yeah, the more, yeah, you could end <laughs> up with a, a, you know cash in your pocket that otherwise yeah, yeah. might not be there yeah and um, the other thing i think that it, you covered which is brilliant is the three for two bargain you know that's brilliant to have that because uh yeah you, you know it, it can throw you when you're in the shop you can be like what does that mean again what's that so that's good mm -hmm. great now to have that mm -hmm. clarified so thanks very much for that um i don't see any questions coming in at the minute and i'm just looking at the time we're not too bad we have a few minutes is there anything else you want to add or anybody want to ask any questions, please feel free. Um, if there's no questions, I'm, you know, I'm happy enough to finish the webinar. Um, I think, I think it'll be uh, useful. I'll just give people maybe half a minute there to put up their hand or anything if they'd like. Um, there's a one yeah. thing I, I just would say, like, once you have one percent, so say you have a random 15% or 17%, once you get down to 1%, all you have to do is multiply it by that 7% or 17% and you have it. Yeah. Or you find 10% and then you find 1% and you just add multiply that 1% by 7 and add it to the 10%. There's lots of different ways to manipulate yeah. it. I'm probably overcomplicating it now. But uh, no, once think... you have those core amounts, particularly the one percent, all you have to do is multiply it by the number of percents you want. I think that was very helpful. The other thing that I hadn't known is while I have the calculator on the phone, I didn't know really how to use the percentage button. So that was very helpful too, that yeah. you can put in, say it was 17% off or something. You could put in 17. Yeah then the percentage sign and then multiply by the full amount and that yeah. gives you the amount. So that's very good as well. I didn't know that before. It's good to know. The thing to remember too is the amount, when you find that 17%, if it's 17% off, you have to deduct that from the original amount. Okay. Yeah. That's not the price you pay. You have to take it away from the original amount. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes that can be a little bit confusing is 
when you work out the percentage, is that the amount I pay or is that the amount that comes off? So yeah. again, the amount, the figure on the calculator is the reduction, yeah. not how much you pay. And uh, stop and think there at that point might help you. You know, if you know it's say 17%, going back to 17% or something, well, often you see 25%, but you know 25 is, if 100% is the whole lot and 25 is the smaller, it's quite small compared to the whole lot, if you like. So if you're, yeah, you can, if you stop and think there, you might, you might think about it as well. Yeah. But thank you yeah. very much. Um, so the, as I said, this this uh, webinar will be put up on YouTube. So hopefully some other students that couldn't join us today will be able to have a look at it then and it'll be a resource for people. Um, and uh, I just want to thank you very much, Maria, for covering that. I think I think you, you've put great information there, that, you know, that will be handy to people again. Um, so thank you very much. And You're this- welcome. Um, Thank you guys <laughs> for having me. <laughs> This finishes off our five webinars that we had that were particularly geared towards students. Of course, adult literacy students can join in with any of the other webinars we have on the NALA website as well. Um, but uh, hopefully they'll add a little resource to um, what's out there for people on the topic we've covered. So thank you very much. Thanks again, Maria. And thank you all for joining us. Um, I'm going to finish the webinar now and just to say thanks again. All right. Mm -hmm. See ya. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye.